I suppose that by now you know all the fundamentals and the basic principles of the game. So this lesson is not about how to play the game. It's about how to play the game more elegantly and gracefully. This lesson is about Go etiquette. And before we get to any of that, the first thing I need to show you is something you've been seeing for the entire duration of this course, and that is how to hold the stone correctly. Because maybe you've been playing some games online, and one day, when it so happens that you have to play over a real board with the real stones, the first instinct is to hold the stone like this, with your thumb and your index finger. But that's not how most Go players would do it. Because like this, it's not easy to place the stone precisely, and it doesn't look pretty. So the way a Go player would hold the stone is between the index finger and the middle finger. You lift the stone up like this, you hold it between the fingers, index finger below, middle finger on top, and when you need to place the stone, you find the spot and you slide the stone off of your index finger, like this. And you can also lift it off the board as well, in the same way. This might seem a little unnatural at first, but after just a bit of practice you will discover that this is the most comfortable way of holding the stones. It's just like holding the chopsticks. First time you do it, it's gonna look a little clumsy, but then once you, once you get used to it and you know which muscles are responsible for that, it becomes very easy. Now, before playing the game, you're gonna have to determine who's playing white and who's playing black. And for that, there's a Japanese procedure known as nigiri. I've shown this in the course with the rules on 9x9, so you can check this video there just to see how nigiri is done. So we imagine that you know who's playing black and who's playing white. Now, before the game, you have to greet your opponent and wish him a good game. In Western countries, you can say hello and uh, shake hands, but what happens in Asian countries, in Japan, China, and Korea, and what you can also do before the game, you can just sit down, make a bow, and then you make the first move. Oh, about the first move. There are 361 options of the first move on the board. Does it mean that we can pick any one of them? Well, if you want to make the first move, let's say, here, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. But if you're following a more orthodox way of playing by taking corners first, then it's only one of the four corners that we traditionally take first. And that is the corner that is closest to our opponent's heart. So if I'm playing black and my opponent is sitting across the table from me, then I would take this corner here. And if I'm white and my opponent is playing black, then he will take this corner because it's closest to my heart. Now the game begins, and during the game you really shouldn't talk to your opponent unless you're very good friends, and you shouldn't distract him in any other way. Because a lot of people think that when it's their turn to play, when it's their clock ticking, they can do pretty much whatever they want, and a lot of people will do something like this. Hmm. And this is something you really shouldn't do, because while you're thinking, your opponent is also thinking with you. So all of this will definitely distract him. So tapping your fingers on the table or on the bowls, rattling the stones or making any other noises is really not recommended. Now the game finally comes to an end, how do we finish it? If let's say you're losing the game by a lot, 50 or 60 points, then you absolutely don't have to play the game to the bitter end. You don't have to make those 150 moves left to play in the game to see that you lost the game by 53 points. And even more than that, you shouldn't force your opponent to make those tedious 150 moves to finish the game. So it would be a very nice gesture to resign the game right now, admitting that you're, you lost the game and your opponent won and he played a good game. But of course, if the gap is a lot smaller and it's not obvious who's losing the game, or if you simply want to practice playing the end game, which is something you should do sometimes, by the way, then it's fine to play the game to the end and count the score. But remember that regardless of the result of the game, even if you lost the game badly and you're feeling frustrated and angry, there's no need to show your frustration right now. Because your opponent, if you won the game, he's feeling as happy as you are upset. So you can feel sad and disappointed later. Now you need to thank your opponent for the game. And if you're playing against someone stronger and he, if he won the game, you can even ask for a little review. And traditionally, your opponent wouldn't say no. And I know that today we use computers for this, but computers only give you numbers. They will only show you that this move was a 35% mistake. But your opponent might actually show you some variations, he might explain something to you, or tell you something what, what he was thinking about when he was making that move. And this might give you a different perspective on the game. In Asian countries, the game of Go has a metaphoric name, hen talk, as in, it's a conversation without words, only by using hands and stones. And even though the words and the phrases are not used, 
This hand-stone conversation can be no less graceful than any real one. And remember that Go is not just about placing the stones on the board. It's about communication and it's about establishing a human connection. And who knows, maybe after a beautiful conversation, you might just make a new friend. So what else is left there to say before the game? Have a great game. Onegaishimasu. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.